What is up YouTube? So I, today I thought I'd do a little update video on my knife making journey. So as you can see right here on the table, we have a Santoku knife that I finished up last weekend actually. Um, and yeah, this knife, I've actually been trying to make a point to use it as much as possible just to see how, how well it performs in the kitchen. Um, just for your information, I've already posted this on, on Instagram before, but um, I don't really plan on doing a whole bunch of chef knives. Essentially, this one is just the practice knife for the Damascus chef knife that I'm currently working on. Um, and that's just more just for practice, more for fun. And I'm really trying to focus on the EDC fixed blades, which you'll see here in a second. Um, but this one right here, we have ADCRV2 uh, blade steel, hand rub finished. It's a little bit um, messed up now because I've been using it. Uh, nice blue paper micarta scales. Uh, ivory G10 pins, and um, you can see right here, I've kind of taken note of all these things, but um, I think I'm going to have to start slowing down whenever I drill, drill into handle material for the pins because, um, as you can see right here, there's a lot of epoxy around it. That means I've kind of blown it out a little bit. I was probably putting a little bit too much pressure on the drill press, so in the future, I need to um, just be a little bit more gentle on that. Uh, but overall, I'm pretty happy with how it came out. It came out much better on this side. Um, as you can see right here, we have the chisel grind. So it's functioning quite well, I must say. Um, I did, when I was going to buff the blade, I was buffing the blade as well as the scales. Uh, I actually caught the knife and I busted the tip of the heel off the blade. So um this is kind of like our around the kitchen beater now, so it's fine. It's not something I'm selling, so um, it still functions just fine. But uh, yeah, overall, I'm pretty happy with how this one came out. Um, and that leads to the my project that I'm working on right now. Um, I have not gone any further because I'm still waiting for some other stuff to arrive. Um, I have to heat treat this knife still, but here is currently the... Damascus um, chef knife that I'm working on and you can kind of see the pattern right there maybe yeah, you can kind of see it um, obviously it still needs to be finished uh, heat treated and then the finishing grind on there as well as etching after that to really bring out that pattern but overall I'm here I'll pull this back a little bit overall I'm pretty happy with how this came out um, the swedge up front I'm pretty happy with it really it gives you something to look at on this side of the knife so it'll add a little bit of interest to this side it doesn't really serve any sort any sort of function um, I made sure to push it forward a little bit because um, I forget who it was who it was but um, they mentioned in the comments that some people it might not be very good for pinch grips and stuff like that so I'd made sure to bring it forward a little bit so that you can still pinch grip with comfort um, so yeah, um, overall, I quite like it. Here is the chisel grind on that side right there. Looking pretty good. Um, this is a, what is this? A eight degree. No, I think this is a 10 degree bevel on the chisel grind. So, um, there, it's not fully sharpened. There's still quite a bit that has to get ground away. Um, but I leave it a little bit thick for the heat treat. And so I'm probably going to bring this down to maybe like an 8 degree bevel because I think this one right here, if I recall, this one is still a 10 degree bevel right here. And um, it does function very well on basic kitchen prep, but I kind of want it to be a little bit more of a finer edge. So uh, we're going to bring it down to an 8 degree bevel, I think. And yeah, I think it's coming out pretty awesome. Actually, I have, I made the scales. So here we go. We have the blue, uh, it's kind of like this really dark blue, rich light material. It's kind of somewhere between micarta and uh, G10. And of course, on this side, we have some Ultim. And I've gone ahead with some epoxy and bonded them together. And right now, it doesn't really look like a whole lot, but... Uh, once I get down into the finish work, um, I kind of did like a very rough polish right here just to kind of see what it would look like. Um, I didn't really go super crazy. I just kind of wanted to make sure that you wouldn't be able to see the, you know, the the, the epoxy whenever you go to polish it. And 
Um, that was like very quick. That was like maybe like a few seconds of doing that and it really came out real nicely. So once it comes up to a really nice high polish, I think it's going to look really nice. And then I have uh, Ultim Rod for the pins and I think it's going to look pretty cool. So, And I'm going to try to slightly bevel the handles to kind of bring out the Ultim a little bit more. Overall, I think it's going to look pretty sweet. So yeah, there's that. Pretty happy with how it's coming out. And like I mentioned, I'm going to start making some EDC fixed blades that are going to be available for you guys. And I started out with, on Instagram if you saw, um, we have these little guys right here, which these were kind of the initial design right here. We have a little sheep's foot one, and then we have a little straight back one. And um, I kind of put a little poll up for you guys to pick which one. The sheep's foot was the winner by a little bit, but overall people still liked the straight back quite a bit as well. And um, I do have a couple blanks ground out in these ones, in this pattern with the leftover Damascus steel. So I still make a couple of those. Um, we'll see what happens with those, but I'm, I'm still going to grind them out and stuff. But um, yeah, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with those, but then... Um, I decided to remake the design. <laughs> so here's the new one that I'm going to go with. It's kind of a, hold on a second. So it's kind of, cause I, I really like the sheep's foot shape. If you guys really can't tell. And yeah, so here it is cut out of. Uh, this is just Kydex. I have it cut out so that way I can kind of just put it over some material and easily trace it out, try to make it as repeatable as possible. Um, but I kind of took the third knife that I made and the first knife that I made, like it's kind of like a, like I said, it's kind of like a sway back type fixed blade. And I kind of had like the little sway back handle. That's kind of how you have it right here. And then it kind of has a similar handle as this one. And I have the sheep's foot blade, which actually is kind of more inspired by the Spyderco Drunken because I recently picked up another one of these. And I love the way that this blade is shaped. So this fixed blade is kind of inspired by that. It's shorter. This is a three inch blade. This is what, like a 3.3 or 3.4 or something like that inch blade. So it's kind of like that. And yeah, just a really good, like I... I don't, if you guys haven't used this or even like a Spidey Chef, it has a very similar shaped blade. It's just, it's such a good blade. So that's kind of what I decided to go with there. Um, and actually, <laughs> funny thing, I actually got a new clip for this thing because that's probably like the big downfall of this knife and um, is this clip right here. This is the original clip. And this clip is a little free upgrade because I actually just recently picked up a... Um, a Balasong utility blade because ever since I started making knives, I'm cutting a lot of strips of sandpaper and I really wanted a utility blade, but you know, I got to be different. So I got this Balasong utility blade, which is actually honestly surprisingly very well made. This has the titanium handles. Um, yeah, titanium handle Balasong, really nice bearings, flush hardware, it ha even has like the spring latch. Like it's surprisingly nice. And this one actually had a clip on it right here. As you can see, there's like the little spot for the clip right there. And it was this clip. And it happened to pretty much fit this thing perfectly. Like the perfect length and everything. Because one of the main things about this, this clip is it's a little bit tight. Like there's not really a whole lot of space for your pants. And this one offers a bit more gap. So uh, I'm going to take this clip off and kind of orange peel it a little bit and then maybe try to polish that to try to match the blade a little bit. But yeah, little if, you're, if you if you have a drunken and you're wanting to upgrade your clip and you don't want to get the Adam Purvis expensive clip, um, get yourself a Balasong utility blade and swap the clip out. <laughs> so, um, But yeah, this blade, this fixed blade is very much inspired by the drunken blades. Obviously, like I said, it's a fixed blade and it's shortened. So... Yeah, very happy with this. And I went ahead and ground out the first one. Uh, this is just the first rough grind. Again, pre-heat treat. I can't heat treat anything yet because I'm still waiting for stuff in the mail. So um, but there's the first one, as you can see. 
Um, it's a little bit smaller than the template, but that's kind of intentional. I actually made the template a little bit large to allow for uh, grinding and stuff like that. So it'll be a little bit smaller than the actual template. And I actually went ahead because it does kind of have a small handle. Like you have about a three and a half inch, like a three and a half finger grip. Like you can still get your pinky on there, but I want to make sure that everybody can. So I did actually drill in a lanyard hole, as you can see right here. And I actually was smart and I actually made a template for the scales as well. And you can kind of just lay it on there. Again, this is a little bit big to allow for grinding, but it should pretty much fit this perfectly. And yeah. So the front of the scale is meant to meet the angle of the plunge grind, which it looks pretty good, honestly. And the scales will actually kind of have, um, it has the hold, but I'll actually kind of cut a little channel right here just to allow for the, you know, 550 cord or whatever you're going to use there. Um, so yeah. So it should be pretty repeatable. So I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, this one is going to pretty much be the first one. Uh, I unfortunately, when I when I took it off the jig, um, it fell down and I did kind of knock the tip off it. But it should be perfectly fine once I get it down to the full grind because um, this is not the final grind right here. Uh, once after once I get it out of the heat treat, um, I plan that these are going to be fully flat ground. So the grind is going to go all the way up to the spine. Um, so I need to, this is about a three and a half degree bevel. So I'm probably going to bump it back to like a, maybe like a three, three degree, maybe like a, wh whatever it takes to get up to the spine. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, overall pretty happy with how it came out. Um, this one is in 80 CRV two as well. The material will actually be changing though. Um, I've been doing some research and, um, the main, like this was going to be the main steel that I was going to use. And I've been doing some research and I'm I, like, ideally I want my little EDC fixed blade to have pretty good edge retention. Um, so I was looking for a steel that heat treats really well for, it, it would work well for the equipment that I personally have. And so I've decided that I'm going to start using for the base model. There will be a, um, 82100, which is a steel that's been around for a little while now, like quite a while. Um, but it has really good characteristics for knives. So um, I should be able to pretty reliably get each one of these to about 62, 63 HRC, hopefully, um, based off like what the equipment that I have available to me and the research that I've been doing mostly with the knife steel nerds and things like that. So um, there will only be a couple of these in 80 CRV too. I have, um, actually have a billet of Teravantium, which I'm going to do a couple on there as well. And I have a plethora of handle materials. Actually. Um, I got a bunch of Tiffany blue G 10 for scales, um, with some Tiffany blue G10 rod, and then we have some ivory G10 rod. I really like those two colors for whatever reason. And then I have some ivory G10 right there. Um, and then, of course, I will make Kydex sheath for each one. And for the Teravantium ones, um, I kind of want to get a little bit cool with it because um, Teravantium is kind of like a real weird almost kind of futuristic type materials, dendritic cobalt for those of you who don't know. So I was like, it's kind of weird, futuristic, kind of crazy. So I thought I would make it like a cyberpunk themed knife. So we got the Teravantium blade with, this is called Turbo Glow. I don't know if you guys have heard of it, but yeah, this is Turbo Glow. Um, I forget which one is which, but it looks green right now, but it actually glows blue. And then we have some Turbo Glow rod, which I will use as the pins, obviously. And these are supposed to glow green, I think, or vice versa. I'm not exactly sure. So I thought it'd be pretty cool to have like a weird cyberpunk themed um, fixed blade. So, And the next thing is what I'm going to name it. I'm kind of undecided on or even like a name for my quote unquote company if I do it. Maybe I was making my name. I don't know. 
but yeah, <laughs> um, my, I've kind of been floating around the idea of just being super nerdy because I really like, um, in my spare time, I do like to play video games. So I was actually kind of floating around the idea of the name, like just called this knife, the companion. And then it'll have different names based off of whatever materials it uses. Like I was thinking the cyberpunk themed one, I would call it the Pan Am from she's one of the companions that you can have playing with you um, on the cyberpunk 2077 game. And then um, I was just floating around like different idea, like different names of different characters from different games for the different variants of the model essentially. So I thought it'd be kind of cool. Uh, more to come on that. I'm still kind of working on it. But if you have an idea for a name for it, let me know. So overall, pretty happy with how this came out. The plunge grind is pretty even on both sides. That was something I was really trying to focus on. Um, I just really want to get my stuff so I can heat treat these things and get them done. But yeah, um, that's pretty much all I really have. So... I'm really excited. I'm really enjoying this thing. Um, if you have any ideas for names for this knife, let me know. Although I'm, I'm fairly certain I've kind of nailed it down a little bit. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all I really have going on. With that, have a great day.